Hello everyone, Miss Gina is back with another April 15th literacy video. The very first thing I'm going to do is write my name, my title on the paper. Write it as you normally would, just as if you were in class physically. I am going to be reading the passage, A Secret Dream. Now I remember subbing and we did one of these and it was so much fun because for every sentence I read, you then had to repeat it and read it out loud the same way. So I wanna challenge you today to do it again. Now you might feel silly doing it yourself, but I bet you're not sillier than me because right now I am sitting on my bed in a pile of blankets and a robe and my hair is crazy and I'm just reading to myself in my room as if there is an audience. So you can do it too, read it to your parents, have your parents join you, have your siblings join you. Reading fluently is incredibly important. Whenever you read, it shouldn't sound like a monotonous robot just spewing out words for Annie, the most exciting day of the week was Friday. No, there should be pauses, there should be life in the words that you speak, just like what you do when you're talking. Because when you're talking to people, you get really excited about something or you get very serious. So today I'm going to read a sentence. I am going to leave some space for you to then repeat the sentence. Try to repeat it exactly as I read it. Some of these are gonna be a little bit more dramatic than the last. Let's start. For Annie, the most exciting day of the week was Friday because it was the day the stagecoach came to town. As soon as the stagecoach pulled up, the team of tired horses had to be unharnessed. Now, I hope you're watching these commas because we should pause for commas. Don't just go straight through those commas. Take a breath. In fact, let's make this next one a little bit more dramatic on the comma. It was Annie's job to take the horses to the stable while her father harnessed up a fresh team. Make sure you take a big old breath at that comma. Make sure there is a pause and go. Now for this next one, let's read it like it was something... I don't know, something exciting, like something that you're whispering, that you heard, overheard on the news or reading or something. Okay. While all of this was taking place, the stagecoach passengers got out and headed toward the hotel to wash up and eat a meal. See, you're reading that like you can't even believe it. Like, why are the stagecoach passengers getting out? Okay, one, two, three, your turn. Next one. The people were always covered with dust from the rugged trails on which they had been traveling. Now that one, I gave it a little bit of some rhythm to it. Try to repeat that. One, two, three, go. Next. Okay, let's do this one with changing the volume of our voice. We're going to do what is called a crescendo. For those of you that are not in music class, it means we're going to start really, really, quiet. We're going to get really loud. Although they were tired and dusty, Annie watched and always admired the women in their long, elegant dresses. Very good. I mean, I can't hear you, but I'm going to assume you're doing good, not just sitting there quietly while I'm sitting quietly. Next. Instead, let's do a crescendo, day crescendo, crescendo, meaning loud, soft loud. Annie observed them closely and wondered who they were and where they were going. Often, she liked to create little stories in her mind about these women. Later on, she would write the stories down in her journal. Perhaps that tall, beautiful woman was on her way to meet her handsome fiancé, she thought. Maybe that girl in the emerald green dress was heading for a fancy boarding school in the city. Annie 
any hope that someday she too would travel in a stagecoach and visit interesting faraway places. While she traveled, she would write about all the fascinating people she met along the way. Annie hadn't yet shared these thoughts with anyone, and for now, it was her secret dream. Now see how that makes a difference when you have these pauses. You're putting the emphasis on, for now, it was her secret dream. If you don't, it just reads, Annie hadn't yet shared these thoughts with anyone, and for now, it was her secret dream. And it leaves it a little bit more bland, a little bit more bleh. Those commas are there for a reason, so allow them to breathe. If you're having issues with just steamrolling right through commas, take a breath at each one. Really allow there to be a pause. Make it more dramatic than it needs to be because you can always cut back on the drama. Now let's discuss our questions. What did Annie do as she observed the women that were traveling? Okay, refer back to our passage. She liked to create little stories in her mind about these women. She also observed them closely and wondered who they were and where they were going. So as she observes these women, she is wondering who they are and where they're going. And she likes to create little stories in her mind about these women. Our final question for this passage, what was Annie's secret dream? Her secret dream is that she too would travel in a stagecoach and visit interesting faraway places. And that while she was traveling, she would read, read, she would write about all the fascinating people she met along the way. That's her secret dream. That's it for this AMI literacy work for April 15th. Read it once, read it twice, read it thrice. Read it as many times in as many different silly voices as you can. This is going to help you become a more animated reader and make it fun to listen to yourself as you read, for other people to listen to you, and who knows, it could just earn you money down the road. Yeah, because if you're really great at reading stuff off a of paper... That means you could be an awesome voice actor. You could do stuff like anime, cartoons, video games, where you just speak into a microphone. There's also chances to be audio narrators, audio book narrators, that is, where you read a book front to back, and then people buy that audio book, and they listen to it on their phones in the car, or if they're just doing chores around the house. It's pretty cool. Finally, though, this isn't a career per se, but you can still make money reading and performing poetry. When you get to high school, there are competitions you can be in called Poetry Out Loud, where you have to memorize and recite poetry. Not poems that you write yourself, stuff that other famous people have written. You then get on stage and you recite these, so pretty much you're reading them from your mind. You can go on to win $20,000 at the highest level where you go for a national competition in Washington, D.C. On the flip side of that poetry, there are also poetry slams. Those you're more likely to see in college, and that's where you read your own personal poetry that you have written. And you can make money winning the competitions that way too. So give this a shot. Try to read as animatedly as possible and have a great day.